Hello again, this is Dr. David Richardson, the Cataract Coach, and welcome to the fourth and final installment of a typical cataract surgery. In the last segment, I had just placed the viscoelastic into the anterior chamber, and now we are about ready to place the lens into the eye. So this here is the lens insertion device, so uh, I place this against the incision, and I actually use what's called wound assist, which I use the incision to assist my delivery of the lens into the eye. This allows me to use a smaller incision size, again 2.2 millimeters. Incision sizes range from 1.8 uh, all the way up to 3.2. Uh, we really don't see much larger than 3.2 now. Years ago, incisions were as large as uh, 11, 13 millimeters. That may not seem like a lot, but when you're talking about the eye, it's pretty big. Now I'm rotating the lens. It's actually been inserted into the capsular bag, and I'm rotating it so that uh, it's in good position. And the uh, and you can see that the that the optic um, goes out almost all the way to the dilated iris, and the capsular edge is actually over the the optic edge. It's difficult to see, but uh, there there is a, a little reflection you can see. That's actually going to help the lens stay in good centered position as the capsular bag heals around that. So at this point, I am going to remove the viscoelastic material because it's no longer needed. Uh, it's done its job of protecting the corneal endothelium and uh, allowed me to safely insert the lens into the eye. So now I'm going to remove it. This here on the uh, left, uh, you see the coaxial irrigation and aspiration handpiece. Uh, you just saw some of the irrigation. And that's going on right now, and I'm aspirating or removing the viscoelastic material from the inside of the eye. And uh, Right now, I'm in front of the lens, so the patient moved a little bit, and again, that's relatively common when, uh, when the, somebody suddenly has clear vision because the, the lens is now in the eye, um, they want to look around. So I generally just uh, uh, gently inform them that uh, we're almost done, we just uh, need them to, to keep looking straight ahead for a little bit. Now right there, you saw I actually took the handpiece and uh, place the tip behind the lens to remove the viscoelastic that's uh, behind there. Again, not everybody uh, does that um, because you're placing the tip near the capsular bag, but my concern is that if that viscoelastic is not removed from behind the lens and it's trapped, then you can get a pressure spike which can put the optic nerve at risk. So as with most things in medicine, it's a, it's a matter of weighing the risks versus benefits. And uh, in my hands, anyway, I think that the, uh, the benefit of uh, removing the viscoelastic from behind the lens is, uh, is, is worth doing. Now what I'm doing is I'm hydrating or um, basically using pressurized uh, saline solution to close off the little paracentesis or side incisions that were made with the one millimeter diamond blade earlier, um, injecting some uh, special saline solution into the eye itself making sure that the lens is well centered and in a good position there. And we're pretty much done with the surgery now. What I'm going to do before uh, I'm completely done is I'm going to inject an antibiotic solution into the corneal stroma. So this is actually injecting it into the, uh, the cornea itself and it whitens the cornea. Uh, it's not pretty, but uh, this is going to go away in the next 24 hours. And what this does is it helps close the incision, and right now I'm just checking the pressure uh, digitally. It's going to close the incision and uh, give this patient some protection from infection. Uh, the first 24, 48 hours are absolutely critical, um, and here I'm actually testing the incision with uh, what we call a wax cell, and it's uh, tight, watertight, the incision looks good, checking the pressure here, pressure looks good, and we are done.